Donovan Mitchell might not be a star player. That's crazy to say. If you are what you say you are, mm-hmm. a superstar, yes, sir. then have no fear. Embiid is here. Kind of. Yeah. Not 100% of Embiid, but, you know, good 70% of Embiid or maybe 60. Right? Yeah. Still putting up 50. He may be 50%, but he's putting up 50 points. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, so Jarrell Embiid scores 50 points to lead the 76ers to cut the series deficit against the Knicks at 2-1. How does this series play out from here, Zay? The mic is yours. You know, I, I have a lot to say about this topic. I watched the game. What was and, yours, uh, man? It's a lot. It's a lot to say. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna separate in two different sec- takes. Uh, the first one, I'm gonna focus on the Knicks in the second half of the game, specifically the last five minutes of the fourth quarter. Uh, Jalen Brunson, you know, you can't you can't sell the game like that in, in a facet that he did. Um, we're coming back. We're in a run. We're down seven. Um, this particular possession, he's dribbling the ball down the court, and usually during these plays, I've seen it time and time again. He does a pull up three, right cash the right wing he pulls up does a pull up three and make a miss that's that's his shot he that's what he does pull up three and this particular instance he dribbles the ball into the paint takes two steps and makes a no look pass right to nicholas batum they move the ball up the court kyle or two shakes two free throws down the court dante misses the three they miss a shot you call a timeout um out, out of that timeout jalen brunson dribbles the ball down the court he drives into the paint kicks it out to the corner dante cuts and turnover two crucial turnovers that we were down seven at one point could have been down three could have been down two depending if we shoot threes or not um and instead of that we're down 12 with under two to go and those situations can't happen i understand people say oh well it's basketball it happens miscommunication happens miscommunication cannot happen in the playoffs stuff like that cannot happen in the playoffs regular season short like that that those are crucial mental mistakes that cannot happen his confidence cannot be shot to the point where he's not looking to shoot a pull-up three. He's not look, looking to take the shot that he takes. It is not that serious. It's not, it's not good. It's not a good look at all. And um, it, it makes it look very unserious. Um, it's wild because Joel Embiid, as Kenny said, 50 points. His That third quarter was magical. Um, no one can miss a shot. Joel Embiid, campaign, Kelly Oubre. Uh, uh, Kyle Lowry, and another reason why I pinned this on Jalen Brunson was because a lot of the times that those guys shot the threes it was wide open because he was late on rotation. They switch off cons- consistently. They switch consistently on defense. He's late to his rotations. Guys are hitting open threes. It's not that he's defensively imposing and then muscling him out the position. He's just late on a rotation. He's so late that they have an open three. That stuff cannot happen. Maxi had an explosive third quarter. And B, everybody had exposed, they, and they're all just shooting on Jalen Brunson's side because Jalen Brunson's rather A, overhelping, or he's late on the rotation. That stuff cannot happen. Brunson had a bad second half. People don't want to hear it because he had 39-13. They, oh, he had 39-13. What are you talking about? He had a great game. He had a no, terrible second half. That it. second half of the game, he cost us the fourth quarter, and no one wants to talk about it. I understand Mitchell Robinson was there. I'm going to talk about that in the second half of my tape, on my second lap. But that fourth quarter, when we're making a run, and Jalen Brunson has the ball in his hands. We're down seven. You have the opportunity to come back. He has two really bad turnovers. Really bad. And you can't do that. Because that goes from a single a single digit lead to a, a double digit lead. A single, a single digit deficit to a double digit deficit. And it messed up the entire Knicks run. And it was bad. You know, and I'm, I'm not, I don't know what is going through on Brunson's mind during these games. Because it just seems like his confidence was shot in that last five minutes of that game. And Stuff like that cannot happen. We have like another game, game four, Sunday. I know it's going to be better. He shot a lot better this game, which is a promising sign, a great sign. But down the stretch, he has to be the one to show up. He has to be the one to, to make everyone command the troops and get everybody focused and locked in and keep everybody on an even kill because he didn't seem even killed during those moments. And that's my, you know, my first lap. Yeah, I just pick up where you left off, right? I'm glad that you bring that up because a lot of people will look at the 39 points and be like, oh, he had a good game. He didn't. And when you look defensively, how Philly involved him into the actions and forced him to switch, you know, attacked him offensively, put him in the blender. You know, he had to fight through screens. The point what they're trying to do, the goal is clear to wear him down. The 76 has clearly exploited the smallest man on the floor in game three and in the series in general. Um, they definitely have attacked 
Jalen Brunson on both ends, and Jalen Brunson has to put together a complete game. And it's just not going to be the stat inflated numbers. It's going to have to be effort on both sides. And I think for me, when you talk about how I see this series playing out or anything, I would just start off with, for starters, Joel Embiid, what is he doing in the game? Should have been ejected. Okay, he tried to hurt my guy, Mitchell Robinson, who eventually got hurt later on in the game. He should have been ejected. What are we doing here? If that was Raymond Green, his ass would have been in Land Bay right now. But I think for me, Joel Embiid, and why I thought this series was always going to be a long series. Yeah, I heard you when the last show we did. Oh, we're going to sweep them or at least by five games. Yeah, I wasn't. I already knew this series was going to be long, mainly because Joel Embiid is a different animal as well. You know, um, he's not clearly 100%, but his impact is, you know, inevitable. You know, even hobbled. I mean, you look at the numbers real quickly here. I mean, in the 76 minutes that he played in games one and two, the 76 has outscored the Knicks by 17 points. In the 20 minutes that he hasn't been on the floor, the Knicks have outscored the 76 is about 27 points. And that's mainly because of his impact passing the ball. He made some crazy passes in the series. I believe he he's up to 16 assists through three games. Um, his effect in the paint, deterring shots, you know, altering shots. Um, I thought he was closing a little better defensively in this game compared to the other games where we was able to take that advantage over him. But um, and he was knocking down shots in game three. And the 76ers, um, quite frankly, was knocking down shots. They had that amazing third quarter that we really couldn't recover from. We tried to stay in distance of the game. And credit to us, that's what we do. We fight. But at the end of the day, their offensive firepower in that stretch was too strong for us to overcome. And another reason why I thought this series was going to be long too, and I didn't overreact to us being up 2-0, was because the uh, surrounding cast beyond Joel Embiid and um, Tyrese Maxey didn't show up in games one and two. But they did get some help here with Cameron Payne, gave them a spark off the bench, scoring, I believe, 11 points. Um, Kelly Oubre chipped in 15 points. So at the end of the day, I do think we are in for a long series. I don't think the Knicks have played anything close to a complete game. And truth be told, we should be down 0-3, okay? And we're not. And I think we have to play our best basketball um, soon. I hope, Hopefully, Mitchell Robinson is um fine. I'm not sure the update on his status, but clearly his ability to collect rebounds is going to be missed. Hartenstein, I believe, was a little bit timid because he was in foul trouble. So it affected his presence in the pain area. So um, a lot of things didn't go right for us, including some of the calls and all that. And I know a lot of people watching the show calls. Really, Lil? You going to go there? But it was just a bad game. And hopefully game four will be a little bit different. How am I expecting this series to pan out? Answering the question here in my last sentence is I still think we get the job done in game six and seven. But it's going to be a long series, especially if Jalen Brunson is playing the way he is. And uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Yeah, my second level. I'm glad you talked about Embiid's impact because his impact was clearly felt in that first half of the game when the man was con constantly abusing the Knicks. And I'm talking about kicking Hartenstein and Mitchell Robinson in the groin. I'm talking about grabbing Robinson's leg while he's jumping up for a rebound to put the. I mean, they're jumping up to put a putback layup or dunk. Um, these are these are unnecessary um contact plays. These are these are non basketball fouls. And I, as yeah, the refs called it flagrant one. Those are um. Just to give you context, Draymond Green got kicked out of an NBA Finals game because he That's kicked so LeBron James in the groin. He I mean, kicked LeBron James in the groin. He kicked it. He got ejected. Now he didn't get ejected. From the I game. didn't think he kicked him in the groin. I think he got up, and LeBron James had his sack on his head. I think he got up. Well, whatever like the that. case was, whatever the case was, like, and Draymond Green was suspended a game for that, which cost the Warriors. You can make the argument that that was the Warriors yeah. series right there. That cost them an entire series, I believe. It happened in Game Five. He got ejected. He got um suspended Game Six and in Game Seven. That that was that was it. You know that's all she wrote. It's one game. Anyone could win it. Like something like this is. It don't make sense how Joel and B. I understand B. Still complaining about the refs um taking over the game. They 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 um dictating the game. They dictating the results of the game. But when when you got players like this doing some dirty plays, hurting guys like deliberately hurting guys. Like he took Mitch Robinson out the game, and he might be out for the series. That we don't know what 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 the the um. The, the results are yet in terms of Mitchell Robinson, x rays, anything else. He was in a walking boot. They said sprained Dago. We don't know yet. But Joel and B is clearly hurting guys. And it doesn't make any sense that 
he continues to stay in the game and get and continues to play the way he was playing. That doesn't make any sense. And it, it wasn't even just like, oh, Philly was just playing so much better. They were hurting our players. They were doing dirty plays, especially a moving screen on OG Ananobi that they didn't get cold at all. Like, they just, like, look past it. And it's like, all right, well, if Embiid's getting all these calls, what happened to the Knicks? Embiid had 21 free throw attempts by himself. The Knicks Literally. had 19 as a team. 19 as a team. So it doesn't make any sense how you we, we complain or people complain about Jalen Brunson's whistle, his foul hunting, and all these different things, but then we overlook the other team. We just simply just overlook like, oh, yeah, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Like, they, they, they just have a they are MVP. What are you saying? He gets the MVP whistle. We're not trying to hear that. We're not as a fan base, as, as, a, as a basketball fan, we're not trying to hear that. We saw a first half of basketball where MVP was deliberately trying to take guys out. Deliberately trying to take guys out because he was frustrated. So he's going to go out there and kick people in the groin. He's going to go out there and hold somebody's leg while he's trying to land correctly. That How is that safe? How is that safe for anyone to play? I'm just saying, if you're going to beat us, beat us straight up. Play play us how we playing. Like, I don't understand how you, how you going to try to take out two guys and then they get and then get a, a, a MVP whistle. And then sit there and be like, yeah, I don't know. I know, you know, I get hit all the time. Like, even the press conferences, mm-hmm. Nick Nurse, completely obtuse to everything. Yeah, I didn't see the play. Joel Embiid, yeah, I get hit all the time. You know, no one complains about me. Like, what? That's craziness. And like I said, you know, they, they shot lights out in the third quarter. That, it, that, was a, that was a great third quarter by them. Not going to take that away from them. But that first half was completely dirt. It, it, it completely decimated, especially when Jalen Brunson getting hit every single play and not a single whistle. He's getting held, hit abused, pushed every single play and not a single whistle. But the moment we make contact with Joel Embiid, the whistle getting blown. That's kind of crazy to me. But yeah, also, I mean, um, how the series goes, plays out um, from here, it's, it's going to be gritty. It's going to be it's going to be a gritty battle. Dirty. It might be dirty again. Game four, I'm expecting I'm expecting some fireworks in game four for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it, I think for me, it, go, it goes to five. It ends in, in the crib. Um, I don't know if it goes to seven per se. Uh, a lot needs to happen for Philly. Like a lot needs to go well for Philly for that to happen. I don't know if Embiid's gonna get multiple fifty point games. He just that was his career high in the playoff, fifty points. I don't know if he's gonna get multiple fifty point games. Um, to for the for the Philly to get to where they need to go because, like you said before, the role players, the supporting cast, can they keep that up consistently for Embiid to have uh successful nights and win games? I don't know for sure. Um, we'll see game four, but I think it ends in five in the crib. I did say four because I didn't think Philly had the heart, but clearly they're willing to take guys out in the first half of basketball game. So they have the heart enough, I guess, to, to stay in it. So I guess, you know, game five. I mean, you talk about the free throw discrepancy. Um, the 76ers shot, uh, excuse me, Joel Embiid himself shot 21. The Knicks as a team shot 19. I think that that's what happens when, you know, you have the stars, right? You you have the star whistle and all that. Obviously, the Knicks are not a team full of stars. We all a team full of grit, and we have guys that play hard in the surrounding cast. That has been as great of of a cast as any Nick team in history. Because I, I mean, when you look at it, even back to 2013 when Carmelo and the Knicks went on that run to, uh, I believe they made the second round. They lost to the Pacers. You had J.R. Smith shooting like 20 percent from three. Jason Kidd didn't even make a shot. Um, it was just a Carmelo Anthony show. And if Carmelo Anthony turned in the two games that Jalen Brunson turned in, they would have been done, swept in that series. Because um, Carmelo Anthony had to be, you know, that Carmelo scoring 20 a night for us to win a game. Well, over here, we had our best player struggling, shooting 30%, you know, from the field, 16 of 55 through two games. And yet we was able to take, you know, um, two games. Why? Because we had about um six players that chipped in in game one. Um, I believe in game two, 20 of the Knicks, 25 points in the fourth quarter came from anybody not named Jalen Brunson. And, and that's because other guys stepped up. But it goes back to Jalen Brunson as well. If he's going to be our number one, it starts with him. He's going to have to put in a better effort on both sides of the ball. And until that happens, that's my worry. If he doesn't play like Jalen Brunson, then I don't think I think the series is going to go seven. If he plays like Jalen Brunson, I think we could win this in six, potentially five. But he gotta he gotta be the one because our guys is playing hard and our guys is chipping in. You know, Josh Hart, once again, do I need to say more about his performance this series? His late game of rogues in game one, his early game of rogues in game two, and knocking shots again. They're daring him to shoot. He's shooting and he's making it. I right, McBride in stride. He's doing his thing as well. We hustling, we doing all the little things, but at the end of the day, we need our best player 
to be at least the second best player on the floor. Right now, the first two best players to me in this series is Joel Embiid, number one, clearly, and Tyrese Maxey. And um, we'll see what happens. But, yeah, I'm a little bit perturbed with our performance last night. I thought that was a game we, we could have won and stole and go up 3-0, give ourselves some rest. You know, hopefully we pack them up sooner. And now it's just evident, like it was evident to me before, that this series is going to be a long series. And the only thing I'm worried about is long term. If, if the reps are going to allow Joel and B to play dirty and rough up our guys and our guys is not healthy, then what does that mean long term in the playoffs? Barring that we get past this team. You know, if they're going to continue to abuse Jalen Brunson and put him in a blender, okay, mm-hmm. forcing him to fight through screens, they don't got much left in the tank offensively. What does that mean long term? Mm-hmm. I'm a little bit, you know, perturbed, but at the end of the day, I still think, and how I see it playing out, is we win in six games. I think, you know, it's interesting. I, like I said, I think our role players play have, have outplayed their supporting cast for majority of the series. Oh, yeah, by four. Um, Josh Hart has been a revelation in terms of what he's been doing offensively. He's averaging 20 a game. Um, you know, a shout out to him. I need to see a little bit more for Dante DiVincenzo. Uh, but that's only because he's not getting enough shots, in my opinion. He only got seven shots last game. I think if he would have more shot attempts, he would have more points. Um, he's a guy that that as he he shoots with volume, he scores within volume, so he needs more to make more. Um, I just you know, I think it's a it's a great series. Um, I think yesterday watching that and watching how it played out, it it gave me that energy this series needs to give. It's gritty, they want to win. And they're willing to do anything to win the game, both Knicks and Philly, clearly. Um, you know, I'm gonna say Knicks clearly too, because we're not we're not no golden child over here. We we definitely hold on a lot of screen. We do a lot too, but now we ain't no trying to hurt nobody like the way I saw last night. That was crazy. We just but, play hard, bro. We don't we don't Yeah, that was that was I mean, like I said, like I said, it, they want it. And it's clear I'm glad they, they're showing that they want it. You know, both Philly and the Knicks. I'm glad they're showing that they want it. Even when um Mitch Robinson that, that play happened, Dante DiVincenzo stepped into Joel and B like, yo, what you doing? So, like, stuff like that, it's clear that the, both teams are hungry to win the game. So, having that energy in there and not just being, like, mopey or, or weepy that, like, you're up 2-0, you're down 2-0 or whatever. I'm glad that this fight in this series, and we're going to see that fight on Sunday game four. All right, we're going to move on here, man. Enough with this Knicks talk before I get the press here. <laughs> you know, please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, you've been slinging shows left and right, slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question, something you may want to answer, something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question. 